Newly available coronavirus vaccines offer hope to end this pandemic, but also raise ethical questions. Are we morally obligated to get vaccinated? What can or should be done about people who won't? We believe that we as individuals have a moral responsibility to get vaccinated. That said, society must respect its citizens' autonomy. It would be unethical and potentially counterproductive to forcibly vaccinate people. So where does this responsibility come from? One theory, totalitarianism, as proposed by John Stuart Mill and Jeremy Bentham, states that we must do what will provide the greatest good for the greatest number. In the case of vaccination, personal risks are negligibly small, and by achieving herd immunity, lives of others could be saved. But once herd immunity is reached, a totalitarian might be tempted to argue that once the responsibility to get vaccinated dissipates, this could become problematic. How do we know for certain what the consequences of an individual getting vaccinated are? We discover an alternative approach in the proposals of German philosopher Immanuel Kant. Using logic and reason, Kant ex- extrapolated that we must act as if the maxim behind our actions were to become universal law. Kant believed this categorical imperative morally binds all human beings all the time. Applying this maxim to vaccines, we can see that a universal refusal to vaccinate would let lethal diseases run rampant, killing millions. Therefore, a Kantian would recognise his moral obligation to get vaccinated, a principle which does not dissolve even when herd immunity is reached. English philosopher William Clifford would go even further and state that simply holding false beliefs is immoral. False beliefs, Clifford reasoned, insidiously affects our actions, posing a danger to ourselves and others. Clifford proposed that we have a moral responsibility to uncover the truth. In fulfilling this responsibility, we would discover that credible scientific evidence overwhelmingly proves vaccines save lives. Clifford would argue that ignoring the scientific evidence is inherently immoral and cannot be excused on the grounds that one simply holds different beliefs. But what can society do about people who refuse to vaccinate? Kant is back with another categorical imperative to help us confront this. A person, as an autonomous, rational being, must be treated as an end in himself, rather than a mere means. Society must accept a citizen's autonomous decision not to vaccinate himself, and is on weak moral grounds in intervening. Vaccinating citizens against their will denies them their autonomy and uses them as a mere means to an end, herd immunity. So, although we do have a responsibility to get vaccinated, society should not force us to vaccinate against our will. Utilitarians might reach a similar conclusion. True, a forced vaccination program might defeat coronavirus. However, this would come with a host of other societal costs, such as fear, mistrust, diminished access to healthcare, societal instability, and increased deaths from other causes, which would far outweigh the benefits. If the societal instability goes to an extreme, it may not lead to higher vaccination rates as a population may rebel. For a final approach, we turn to British philosopher Thomas Hobbes and his view that morality is based on a social contract. Vaccination, according to Hobbes, is part of the individual's contribution to the contract, and society provides benefits in return. An individual may refuse to vaccinate, but as a result, he relinquishes his claim to some of society's benefits. This view gives society moral grounds to selectively reward the vaccinated, but in doing so, we must take extreme care to avoid the same pitfalls as forced vaccination. To conclude, individuals have a responsibility to vaccinate, to protect those around us. If someone chooses not to vaccinate, however, we have no right to force them. But society can achieve its goals without force through education and incentivization. In these challenging times, returning to our philosophical roots can guide us through this crisis to victory.